My name is Jennifer Wen and I recently finished my coursework um, doing a Bachelor of Law and Bachelor of Arts in Communication, majoring public communication at UTS. And I've currently started working as the Graduate Services Coordinator at the Law Society here. And I am also about to start PLT, that would be in October, and that will be with the College of Law. Now, do you uh, have a, a statement or comments you'd like to make about your, um, your time at university and your, your experience? Um, I would say it's very hard to com sort of compress it into a very quick statement, mm -hmm. but I'd say that there were definitely ups and downs. Majority ups, I would say um, I came into university with very high expectations because I was told that UTS being a relatively young university was very up to date with technology, with practical skills, um, and they have fantastic tutors and I, I absolutely agree with that. Um, but I do think there is room for improvement as well and mm. I'm, I'm happy to expand on that if you have further questions. No, please go ahead. Yeah. Please expand on that. Oh, definitely. Um, so I think, like I said, the practical components, the skills and the, the hard skills that are taught at UTS are taught as well as can be, in my opinion. Um, the tutors were fantastic. The soft skills, like Leslie has mentioned, there was a lot of emphasis on especially graduate attributes. And I think that was a really good way to go about it. Um, it was very heavily pushed um, in all the subjects, um, especially towards the end, uh, things like civil practice, where our tutors would actually get us to print out a list of attributes, keep it with us, on us at all times, so we can refer back to it. I think that was a very unique way of going about teaching the, a balance of hard and soft skills. So we'd have that opportunity to merge the skills together in our everyday learning. I think that was fantastic. Um, what could have been improved, I think, would be more discussion about what happens after university, what happens when we sort of finish or in even that space between finishing university, graduating or finishing university and doing PLT. I think there probably could have been a little bit more emphasis on that, especially towards the end in the final subjects. Again, I refer to civil practice where we learned a lot of the practical skills we'd be needing in the future. I think that would have been beneficial definitely to have more of a picture of where we could end up rather than just saying you will be practicing in private law or you'll be practicing in criminal law, which is what a lot of the students got. Um, well, my impression is that's what a lot of the students were thinking towards the end of the degree. So, so what, was your, um, what was your aim when you started your law course? Where, where did you hope to end up and uh, where did you, well, I know where you've ended up, you ended up here, but um, <laughs> what are your aspirations? What were your aspirations when you started your course yep. and what are your aspirations now? Um, they've changed a lot, as a lot of people know. Um, I started in a communications degree straight communications and international studies, both of those were in the arts faculty at UTS. And I did those for two years. Um, I did communications my first year, the international studies in the second year. I decided I really didn't like international studies, so I switched out of it. And law seemed, I didn't have any intention of doing law, to be honest. In When I was in high school, when I was in my first year, I thought law wasn't for me, I wasn't going to practice, I definitely wasn't going to go into law in any capacity. Um, but I ended up doing law because I couldn't do business, which is what I originally wanted to combine my degree with. And so I ended up going into law, I ended up quite enjoying it, um, to my surprise. Mm -hmm. I thought it was, it was taught in a way that was very enjoyable, in that, you know, the the content, I think the content was very, very interesting and the way they merged it with everyday examples. A lot of our lecturers um, and tutors were lawyers or are lawyers and they had no troubles getting a little bit more personal, especially with their practicing um, what they did and the clients that they de dealt with. And I thought that was very, very interesting and that sort of caught my attention and I'm sure a lot of my colleague, um, classmates' attentions. Um, even those who didn't intend to practice law. So in that sense, I sort of was more encouraged to venture into the legal field, legal industry. And um, so, like I said, I had this plan. I had this plan of going into communications and advertising, which I did. I did um, five years of working in communications and marketing before uh, ending that and coming to the Law Society. Mm -hmm. And 
and I'm still keen to use those skills in my, my roles in the future, um, even if whether that involves practicing or not. I think um, I sort of laid out a bit of groundwork for myself and I'm keen to continue working on that. Jennifer, I'm keen to talk to you about job opportunities. Um, yes. I do a bit of mentoring, particularly with um, female lawyers, mm -hmm. and I'm mentoring somebody at the moment who's confused about where they want to go in their career, sure. and, and I'm strongly encouraging them to stay in private practice and not come in-house at the stage they're in their career at the moment okay. because I just think they're, they're, they don't have enough legal skills, and I think that yeah. the law firms provide a, a superb basis for teaching you a, a lot of legal skills. Mm -hmm. But can I just go back? During your university career, um, students often apply to the uh, big firms for summer clerkships and mm -hmm. things like that. No one ever comes to me. And I have, you know, 4,000 clients in my firm. I spend tens of millions of dollars in external mm -hmm. legal fees. And I'm curious as to why students don't look at the in-house profession for job opportunities when they're at their early stages of their career and particularly okay. when they're studying as well. Sure. Um, if I'm going to be completely Please honest do. with you. Uh, you want to offend me? Trust me, I'm a lawyer. Oh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I think students, a lot of times, they won't apply for in-house jobs because they don't think they'll get them. That's just off the top of my head. That's what I think is the case. I think I've talked to a lot of law students. Uh, I have friends that are law students, are lawyers, and all of them have the eventual goal of, almost all of them have the eventual goal of practicing in-house, <laughs> going in-house. Um, so I don't think it's you. You all I want think, my job. <laughs> I think it's very attractive role to a lot of law students and why? a lot of young lawyers. Why? Can they, I ask you why? I think a lot of people like the idea of sort of working for one client as sure. opposed to a whole bunch of them. A lot of people go into private practice, like you said, because it's a great way to get skills or get started because a lot of people do that. But they eventually, they sort of want to get, get those skills and, you know, process them and then take those skills and focus them all on one client. And I think people think that they can't do that if they haven't gone through that mm. process mm. of going through the big firms or even a smaller firm just to get skills that will help them later. Because when you work in-house, I think it's not just legal skills that you need. I think you need all sorts of soft skills as well. And um, you're gonna be working in a very business capacity. Mm. you know. So you have to be more business-minded. And without the exposure that the big firms provide you, there's less of a chance that the students will be able to get in there, um, be logical even, um, when dealing with matters to do with their one client, because it's one client and all of it's resting on that one client. A lot of students don't have the confidence or they don't, they don't think they have the confidence to go straight for the in-house role, even though they might want to. Hmm, it's interesting. I might have to speak to Professor Hitchens <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> Thank you. Um, one of the things that you've uh, referred to has been the, the, the practical skills. Yes. And I think one of the, the issues for law schools is that um, often there's a divide between the law school mm -hmm. and then the um, GDLP, going to the College of Law. Yep. And so I, I guess the, the, the question for you is then, um, is it your view that there should be more of that sort of practical training in the law degree? Um, rather than just waiting until you're, you're, you're doing the GDLP? Um, I think yes and no. I think definitely uh, for every opportunity that a university gets, they should be incorporating practical skills or teaching students at least about practical skills, or even if they don't teach them, making them aware that they should be going out themselves and trying to find these skills. Um, but the hard thing is, that sometimes you can't teach the practical skills because the students, they are students and they're not, they, most of them haven't worked in a legal capacity. Mm. And a lot of the times I think universities might be thinking ahead to after university where students do take on the PLT and thinking, okay, well, they will be learning these practical skills during their practical legal training rather than in university. And I know a couple of my tutors they made it aware that we'd need to go out and get experience and practical training. But I think they also said, also just wait until you've done PLT and a lot of things will become clearer. So there's this um, sort of way of thinking, I think, among a lot of people in university that, oh, I don't really need to really familiarize myself with the practical skills at the moment because I haven't done PLT yet. And when I do PLT, things will sort of click. 
Now, I haven't done PLT, so I don't know if it will click or not. And I'm sure I'm sure it will, at least some parts. So I think what I would have probably benefited from a little bit more, um, just a little bit, a little bit of hindsight, I think, into what it would be like to practice or what skills I should go out and get myself, um, right. as opposed to being, as opposed to people saying, you know, wait until PLT and you'll be able to get all that experience then because, you know, it's fair enough that I should wait until PLT. Um, I think a lot of the skills taught in PLT are very, very valuable and very specialised. That's why they don't teach it in the degree. But at the same time, I do think there should be at least someone, um, you know, as either a, a careers counsellor or maybe one of the tutors saying, OK, you know, we know you haven't had any experience as a lawyer we or working in a legal capacity, but here's what you can do to maybe prepare yourself for a couple of the things that are going to come to you after you finish uni, before you start PLT and before you start working. Uh, Jennifer, do career counsellors at university focus only on um, life in private practice or do they talk about um, life in government or working in-house? Um, as, as, well? as, as far as I know, there hasn't been too much discussion about government and in-house. Um, that being said, I don't have too much experience with careers counsellors, mm. especially ones that specialise in law and the legal field. Mm. But I know there is a general gap um, in the discussion among law students and recent law graduates about public service. And I know a lot of law students really have no idea about the public service opportunities out there. Um, government opportunities, I think students, they sort of think, well, what's a government lawyer? It's someone who's worked in pra private practice for 30 years and they decided to take the government role to write out the rest of their career. But I think that's not true at all. I think there's heaps of graduate programs that are offered and there's so many opportunities for young lawyers and young graduates, even students, I think there's a couple of clerkships that are offered as well by some government organisations and students don't really know that at all. They think the government is just something that people go to afterwards, after they've practised and um, there's not much discussion at all. I think uh, law schools would benefit showcasing more of the government opportunities, public service government opportunities. Where, where did you find out the information about um, government service? Um, I have to say a lot of it started when I finished uni and started working, did a bit more research mm. into this because I work in graduate services here mm. and so a lot of my role is uh, research as well as coordination. Um, so I did quite a bit of research into the programs that are offered and I found out an astonishing number of programs that are offered um, by government agencies and I think law students tend to overlook those, um, even if other students don't. I think commerce students take advantage of them. Even arts students like to take advantage of them, but law students, maybe not so much. And I think that's a conversation that needs to happen um, among university staff and law students. Okay, um, just as a final question. Sure. Um, do you think that students, law students need to learn more about technology and um, have coding skills, or is that something that um, is not um, important as part of their undergraduate course. It's 100% important, I think. Um, it's absolutely important and students are technologically savvy, especially young students, I think, but they need a bit of guidance in terms of they will be fine with Facebook, they will be fine with Instagram, but when it comes to the more specialised programs, they'll need to be told, first of all, that they are there and that they exist and that it is worthwhile to go out and learn a little bit about them, even if it means attending one seminar on an introduction to legal software, LEAP, for example. Um, and students, a lot of the times they will think, you know, I can wait until I'm on the job, they'll teach me at work, mm. which they do. I think that they do do a good job at teaching students at work, but at the same time, if they don't have that grounding in it, it things get very confusing very quickly. And on top of the workload that recent graduates have, learning about legal technology, legal software, or um, any anything emerging like artificial intelligence as well, um, students need to be aware that 
it's there and it will affect their practice and it'll affect the future of the legal profession. Thank you.